With the rerun of the Raiden Shogun, we've seen a massive spike in the amount of Raiden Havocs. With the banner being pretty much an excellent choice for a team if you're looking to use her. But let's be real, you're not here for a boring Raiden guide where I tell you surprisingly her best weapon is her signature weapon, and that you find my artifacts in Inazuma, which you should all know by now. But you're actually here because you want damage. So in this video, I'll be showing you exactly how to get the most damage out of your Raiden and start nuking with the team on the banner, and also some substitutions you can make if your luck is really that bad. And I'll be talking you through how every character has a role to play in hitting that sweet, sweet six or even seven digit number. If you do enjoy this video, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and maybe even join my discord where you can get even more help and interact with one of the best communities in the gacha space. So let's start off with Raiden. So first off, I won't be super detailed when it comes to any of these character builds, and that I suggest you go for a rather conventional build for all of these characters, but there are a few exceptions which I will get into later on. Obviously for Raiden's weapon, what would be ideal is having engulfing lightning, as it is their best weapon, but if you're free to play or just don't have a weapon, 4 stars like the catch can also work super good too. For our artifacts, you want to be running 4 piece Emblem of Seven Fate, with rather standard stats that include energy recharge on your sands, electro damage on your goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on your circular, which is what we usually see in a typical Raiden build. In the case of a Raiden nuke build, having as much crit damage as you can is vital, as you obviously want to be doing more damage. So I'd suggest having a spare crit damage circular piece where you can equip it whenever you want when doing nukes. And this will allow you to have a high amount of damage, but it will be less consistent, meaning that you might need to go for multiple attempts when it comes to actually doing the rotation. But food can also kind of help with this. Just like a standard Raiden build, you also want to make sure that you have plenty of energy recharge, with over 250% being what you want to aim for. And as for your talents, you still want to focus on leveling up your burst and skill over your normal attack, as of course your burst is what's going to be doing the damage. Ryan's constellations are also a big factor in how much damage you'll do as well, as the C2 and beyond can be super useful when it comes to getting that little bit of extra damage. For example, Ryan's C2 Steelbreaker ignores 60% of enemies' defense, meaning that she does a ton more damage than let's say C0. So if you do spend quite a bit on the game and want to do even more damage, then Ryan's C2 can actually really help you. But again, it's not required, so it will be a lot harder to get a larger amount of damage at C0. Just for reference, I will be using C2 Ryan in this video, just to give you an idea of how much more damage you could be doing with the extra constellations. Now let's turn to the rest of the team, who you actually don't need to invest a lot into, especially whenever it comes to stats and artifacts. The trickiest one would be Kujo Sara, who dishes out an electro damage boost at C6, which is a huge difference to Raiden's damage as well. But without C6, it's not like she's useless or anything, but again, you probably won't be hitting as high without it. For Sara's build, you can really run any build you like, such as Emblem of Seven Fate, which is a fairly standard build. But what you want to focus on with Sara is her base attack, meaning that you want to make sure that she's the highest level possible and also has the most highest level equipped weapon too. Some weapons, including 5 stars, have a higher base attack than others. So before the rotation, make sure that you give her whatever's the highest, even if it doesn't have any effects that particularly help her. A size attack boost that she'll provide is all based on how high her base attack is. You also want to make sure that her elemental skill is prioritized when leveling her talents, as you will get a higher damage boost the higher you level it, with the next time you want to be leveling is her elemental burst. Bennett is also similar to Kujo Sara, in the sense that he also scales off base attack, meaning that you also want to make sure that he's leveled up high, and the same goes for his weapon. For his artifacts, you want to run 4 piece Noblesse Oblige, so that you can use that 20% attack boost when using his elemental burst, which can be quite useful, but if you feel like being different, you could always run the 4 piece Noblesse on Chevreuse instead, which can also be a pretty viable option. And it goes without saying that these characters will help you to do more damage the more you level them, their weapons, and their talents. So if you're trying this with them fairly low leveled, then you might not see as big results. Finally, for Chevreuse, you want to be running a weapon like the Favonius Lance, which is just standard for her character. And also Song of Days Past, the new artifact that recently released with the release of Navia. This is just a rather standard build for Chevreuse, as she's actually a very simple character to build. And a simple build can really get the most out of her for this nuke. As all you need to make sure with Chevreuse is to get at least 40,000 HP in order to get the maximum attack boost she can provide. As she provide a 1% attack boost for every 1000 HP she has, making it super important that you make the most out of her HP, even if it does mean running a weapon with a HP% percent stat, just to help you get over the line. It is worth mentioning if you want to do even more damage then there are some other characters that you can use instead of Chef Roos, including Mona using Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, which has proved to be a much better option. Before this video I'll be using Chef Roos, just because many people want to utilize her after getting her on the most recent banner. Now that your characters are built and in a party, you have to decide which boss you want to take on, and there is a ton you can choose from. Scaramouche is a good boss to try out on regardless of his electro resistance, but it can kind of be annoying having to do that long fight just to end up like messing something up or not even critting. So that's why I actually suggest trying this out on Masanori. Although he isn't the most exciting enemy, it is super easy to quickly teleport away and have multiple attempts, which is very useful, because you can have a couple of goads without wasting any food. There are many other domains and bosses you can try this out on, but if you have quite a high level team that has a high damage output, then I wouldn't suggest taking on either of the flowers. Just because when I try, my Sara decimates it before I even get the chance to burst with Ryder. So for this video example, I'll be taking on Masanori. One thing to note about him is his ability to block, which can be quite annoying, especially when Whenever you do a full rotation and he just stands there like he hasn't been hit by a massive sword from a literal Electro Archon. So just make sure when you're doing your rotation that he isn't still in that state, because trust me, I've hit that sword so many times. One more thing that will increase your damage massively when doing this rotation is food and consumables. What I like to use is the Adeptus' Temptation, which increases your character's crit rate and attack, and also Shocking Essential Oil, which will give you 20% Electro damage, meaning that you can get even more damage when it comes to using your Ryan's Burst. And obviously, when preparing to do this rotation, you have to make sure that you have all your elemental bursts and skills somewhat ready, which I just 
just tend to do by taking out some enemies nearby. So now for the actual rotation. Firstly, you want to use Ryan's skill to make sure she can get all the resolve from the other party members. Then you want to use Bennett's burst to get the damage boost, followed by Sarah's burst and skill. Use Chef Rooster's elemental skill to gain that attack boost. And finally, use the Shogun's burst. And they should definitely be seeing a much better amount of electro damage than you're used to. If for some reason you mess up the rotation or something goes wrong, then don't panic. Just teleport away, get your bus ready, and then go again. While you still have the bus from the food and consumables. And there you have it. That is the full rotation. Pretty simple, huh? As I said, there can be many variations to this rotation, like the teams, character levels, weapons, and more, which you can change over time, and you'll definitely see better results the more you improve on these. And obviously, if you get to the point where your supports can't get any better, then the only option is to keep improving your Ryan build. As it's essential to have a good Ryan build, which should be a given. If you're still struggling to get anything near what you're expecting, then feel free to rewind the video to find something that you may have missed or messed up in any as it is very intricate and can be quite hard to understand at first. And if you need further help, then come over to my Discord, where community members can definitely help you out with even the nichest of problems. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing for even more guides like this, and also some generally fun Genshin and Gacha videos. And also comment down below how much damage you were able to do after following this guide, as I'm super interested to know how much of an improvement it made. That's all, see ya!